In 2022, I could have ended the year with $2,000 more in my portfolio if I would have just done one simple thing. And when you look at the portfolio size that I have, which is under $25,000, that is huge. That is huge. That is almost a 10% difference. So when I see that, I have to take a look at my investment strategy and figure out ways I can make sure I'm taking advantage of all potential growth that there might be. And growth in 2023 is already starting to look a little bleak. Some reports from the World Bank are already saying that the a global economy could tip into recession this year. The same problem from 2022 are to blame. Interest rate hikes to combat inflation, the war in Ukraine, and COVID's impact still on the economy, preventing it from running on all cylinders. That's why in this video, I wanna show you how I'm planning on getting the most out of my investing in 2023, how I calculate those numbers, and what is my plan going forward this year. But first, an introduction. How's it going everybody? I hope you and your investments are doing well. My name is Steve Coleman and I am a dividend stock investor putting $150 every week into my tax-free savings account to grow a source of investment income that I can tap into if you know times get tough or if there's a major home improvement that we want to pay for. I'm hoping that I'll be able to grow my portfolio to be over $1 million over the next 20 years. So whenever I see there's a little bit of a difference in like the potential growth I could have had, I want to take a serious look at what opportunities I might have missed. And the opportunity I think I missed here was taking advantage of exchange traded funds, ETFs, over buying individual stocks. Now I know that's not a major secret and it's definitely not been a secret for those in the FIRE community, the financial independence retire early crew. As well, this has never been a secret for those of the multi-rich, you know, the Warren Buffetts out there, who has said that when he passes away, that he wants his wife's inheritance be put into an exchange traded fund, 90% of it. So if it works for him, it can definitely work for us and it can definitely work for me. So to see if this idea has any merit, I decide to look at my portfolio as if it was with some minor modifications, as well as if I had only invested into VDY, that's Vanguard's Canadian High Dividend Yield ETF. So let's take a look at the results. I'll talk, walk you through how I made those calculations, what were those little changes I made, and how does that influence things going forward? Okay, here we are at PortfolioVisualizer.com using the Backtest Portfolio Asset Allocation Analyzer. So I am just looking at the year 2022, the time period is month over month. So beginning January 2022, ending December 2022. And so what I decided to do is basically use the initial amount of $15,000. Now, in reality, at the beginning of 2022, I had $10,000 roughly saved up. And in April, I added an additional 5,000. So I am making the assumption that, or I'm, I'm telling this system that I am starting with that amount to begin with. It's not exactly what happened in reality, but I have to, there's no way to actually do that in this test. And the contribute, the fixed amount is, is $650. So where the $650 comes from is basically the $150 I put into my tax free account every week. So it's 150 times 52 divided by 12 to give me like what my roughly the uh, monthly contribution is, which is $650. Inflation adjusted, sure. Frequency contribution is if it's monthly. Like I said, that was the only option. I can't do $150 uh, weekly or I would have. And rebalancing, rebalance monthly. So I decided to choose rebalance monthly because I am trying to keep that portfolio kind of keeping it regular. Like, you know, so when, with my asset allocation of 6.25%, I'm trying to keep that across the board. So here I made it all equal as well. But let's go back to reinvest dividends. Yes, I always reinvest my dividends. So we want that to show for, as well. And everything else is pretty standard. So then we get into the two portfolios that we're going to be comparing. So the first one is VDY.TO. So that's the Vanguard Canadian High Dividend Yield ETF. So the first portfolio is 
The second one is at 25%, so I rounded it up. So I'm, again, I'm making some of these numbers just a little bit easier for me to put in here. So 25%, and then that leaves 75% divided by 12, which gives us 6.25%. Uh, now, of course, at the beginning of the year, that wasn't always the case with, let's say, with Royal Bank, and I think Pizza Pizza was very high at the beginning of the year, um, and obviously towards the end of the year, like some of these have dropped significantly, so it wasn't always 6.25%, but the main thing is, and if you've been following along this channel, I always try and keep my portfolios very diversified as well as equally diversified. So then I, I've already done this, but then you analyze the portfolios, and this is where you get the outcome. So it kind of goes over things again. You know, portfolio number one is 100% in this stock. And then here you can see kind of roughly then, well, this is then the other portfolio. You know, 25% of ETF and 75% made up of 12 individual stocks. And so then this is where it gets really interesting with the, the uh, performance summary here. The final balance, you know, so this is where the $2,000, well, 2100 really, is um, we could find that. And here you can see how they begin to diverge. And I, if I was only investing in VDY, I would have had $2,000 more portfolio annual return. So portfolio two, which is kind of mimicking mine, is down 11.61%, where portfolio number one is only down negative 22. So this one is less volatile. So I would have held on to more of my money had I done one. They both lost money. Like this not notice that. They both are down, but one is down more than the other. And there you can see it. Two thousand dollars if I would have just put all my money into ETFs versus having a bit of mix of ETFs and individual stocks. Now I've got nothing against individual stocks. I've been holding them for a long time. I will continue to hold them for a long time as I re refuse to sell anything because one, they're still in the red and I don't want to experience a loss and I'm probably going to still invest in them. Well, here, I'm going to lay out exactly what I plan on doing going forward, which is basically any new money that I'm putting into my investments, into my tax-free savings account using Wealth Simple Trade, I'm putting that $150 towards the ETFs first and foremost. And again, VDY is the ETF that I'm choosing. And we'll talk more about that ETF in the future videos. And then any money left over that, plus any money that I'm receiving from dividends, I'm going to reinvest those dividends into the individual stocks that I have and try and maintain a very diversified portfolio there. So in my example, it was like 6.5% across the board that it will be my goal to try and keep things nice and even and diversified to just again help weather any kind of future turmoil that we're expecting to see in 2023. I'm actually really excited about this portfolio change as it does really simplify things for me a bit. Now I do know that past performance does not predict future performance, so I, I, I am keeping that in mind. But I really am optimistic that I'm actually going to really like just the results that I'm going to look at one year from now. And that's my cue to invite you along to join me on this journey. Like this video if you agree with this strategy. Heck, like it if you kind of disagree and leave me a comment and let me know why. Subscribe. I love to grow the channel and I also love to kind of interact with you even further. So like, subscribe, leave a comment. That'd be awesome. And that's it for this video, guys. So keep in the green. We'll see you in the next one. And take care. Bye.